Hey guys, Bluff Monkey back again for AM Studios, and in this video, we are going to take an in depth look into Expert Serum. So, something to note if I repeat these notes, we've got oscillator A and the sub oscillator <clears throat> set to saw waves. Now, you can actually hear some phasing. Now, we will go on to phasing the phasing of the oscillators when we go to the main oscillator section, but this is something to note for later on. So let's choose, um, for example, a square wave for the sub oscillator. Click normalize. It attempts to louden this up to maximum possible value, but this is based on the, the kind of little piece down here. So let's try this again. So that sub oscillator becomes less and less noticeable um, once you run everything through a filter and some reverb. But if I click the direct out button, obviously you can hear that much better again. It's now, modulating the wavetable position of oscillator A. But if we come into the wavetable editor using my mod wheel, you can see at the bottom here, it's now showing, if I scroll all the way over to the right, 109 individual wavetables, uh, waveforms. Section. This wave but this allows you to um, set the phase of where the sample is going to start, and also it allows you to randomize um, whereabouts in the phase it starts as well. So think of phase oscillator phase as whereabouts in the cycle that the oscillator starts, or in this case, it's the sample. So you've got a beginning point and an end point. See it because it's slightly off screen for you, is I'm gonna click and drag this sample into the <clears throat> oscillator section itself. So as you can see, as I'm trying to pull this sample in, you get different options. Uh, import normal, dynamic, dynamic pitch, zero snap, dynamic pitch, follow, uh, constant frame size, pitch average, and then you can import it. Initialize preset because I'm going to use the unison control next and we're, we're most kind of um, conditioned to hearing this with a saw wave. So it makes sense to use one. So the unison you can choose between one and what's it go to 16 voices. And you can see these voices represented by these green bars here. Now, if you have a look at what's actually shown, you've got one yellow or two yellow, you've got yellow and green bars representing your yeah, unison. It's just running by itself, uh, but you can sync that to the um, host tempo. I'm not sure why you would, because inherently this is supposed to be a chaos LFO. I suppose if you wanted something synced, you just use a standard LFO. So mono. Now what happens if I, if I don't have mono selected? I'll hold down one note. So we can do oscillator sync. Now oscillator sync in the traditional analog synth, uh, sense would mean um, using the using one oscillator to synchronize the um, phase of the other oscillator. So if I switch this on, you will probably hear, in fact, let me go back to um, a saw wave because it's gonna be easier to recognize. So if I switch on oscillator sync, so these are all the, the available um, oscillator morphing option. If I click on this little pen icon, you get a, a separate window that comes up. And there's various ways of remapping. Now, if you ever, ever use the video editor and you look at the curves tool, it allows you to reshape or rebalance um, hue, saturation, color, that kind of thing. And this is kind of working in the same way, um, so the oscillator warp. And we can also resample the oscillator as well. They're two slightly different things. And we'll have a look at those quickly now. So we'll have a look at um, the render oscillator option first. Now, what this does... Resonance, LFO3 to coarse pit or octave pitch and LFO4 to this sync. Once you've used up all four, a fifth one appears, okay? So there's actually, if we look in the mod matrix, uh, there's actually eight main LFOs that will appear in this section here. Let me just reset this preset. Delay, and what so that does, does is it introduces a delay before the LFO does anything. So 
that will give you two seconds of nothing and then two seconds of LFO rise. You've got two seconds of the LFO doing nothing and then two seconds of it ramping up. And each node has got one of these splines in between where you can set the curve between nodes as well. So what we we're talking about earlier is using this as an envelope. Um, so let's create a fairly traditional envelope style shape. So you've got your attack, your decay, you can have a sustain style thing here. Tail. And then this can... like back in the day, this was this would traditionally have been done with a chorus unit. That's what the lexicon reverb filter is here. But you don't have the routing options, uh, so you can't choose to route oscillators into this filter. It's a it's a global filter, and everything will go into this filter. Unfortunately, it's a shame, but you know that's the way it is. So you've got your cutoff resonance drive fat, or this is going to be the alternate control. Um, the unison detune is going to be applied to that warp setting as well. So each detuned unison note is going to have a slightly different warp setting. Okay, so the warp is effectively detuned as well. And this will be the fundamental tone of this particular sound that we're making. If I add another one over here, So each one of these, we're adding another sine wave to the waveform that we're trying to create. Now at the bottom here, this allows you to adjust the phase offset of... 